Hello there, friends. Welcome to day 20 of 40 days to the brave new you. Welcome also to your greatest partner living inside. Living inside of who? Living inside of you and living inside of me. This is the end of Activated Week, taking action. That's what this week was all about. And I'm very excited about next week, which is victorious. But today, we are still taking action. So, give me a moment while I give a share to a couple of friends that are interested. And also, when you uh, are on, when you come on, if you don't mind sharing, that'd be a blessing and encourage someone. Today at day 20 is called I Am Successful. I'm successful. And you know, sometimes we think as Christians, well, we don't have to be successful. You know, there are those that are locked in performance. I've got to succeed for Jesus. And then there are those are, well, you know, it doesn't matter. God loves me no matter what. It doesn't matter. It's all good. But what is success? This week, remember, or this whole study is about being brave, being bold, bold in ways you've never been bold before, finding respect for yourself in ways you've never respected yourself in, taking action in ways you've never taken action before in, becoming victorious over your past so that you can be encouraging for yourself. And at the end of day, uh, of week of action, let's talk about being successful. So, one moment please while I share this because that's how the good news goes forth. You know, you can go tell it on the mountain or you can share it in your Facebook. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, one moment and we will get on track. When you come on, if you don't mind sharing this, that would be a huge blessing. If you would share this on your profile, that would be a huge blessing so that others can be encouraged on this final day of taking action. That would be awesome. And I appreciate it. That's how we support one another. Okay. Father God is for us. He is a good Father. He sees our weaknesses and He sees our strengths. And he works with us. He does not put pressure on us to be someone we're not. And he is thinking about us through a different lens. Success in God's eyes is different than success in our eyes. Different than what we think. When you move forward without giving up, Wayne, Wit, Rourke, listen to me. When you move forward without giving up and when you continue to do your best and you still don't quite get it right, that's not failure. That's success. Success to God is trusting Him as you do your best to hear His voice and follow Him along the way. That is the true definition of success. Listen, you can make a gazillion mistakes and be a huge success. You may not be a success in man's eyes. You might miss it by putting that investment in the wrong place. You might miss it by betting on that wrong horse. Ha, ha, ha. You might, like, you might miss it by taking the job that you weren't sure about, so you took it and then you're like, oh my gosh, I took the wrong job. You might miss it by taking the wrong medicine when you were trying to decide between two. You might miss it by having some friends that you go out with and hang out with and then you go along with one and that ends up being a fiasco. Look, you might miss it. But if you are doing your part to hear, to listen, listen, God is doing his part. God never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He's right there with you the whole time. He's right here with me the whole time. The whole time. The whole time. <laughs> and I'm thankful. So today in your mind, I want you to take on the thought, I am successful. Think to yourself right now. I am successful. I am successful. I am successful. Isn't there a scripture in uh, Jeremiah? 
about being success and not failure? Listen, even in the old, God had nothing but success planned for us. So what comes to your mind after you read the sentence, I'm successful? Do you think about all the ways that you failed? Do you think about all the ways people have told you you failed? Listen, I know what it's like to be around people that are perfection-oriented, that are performance-oriented, that think it's their way or the highway. God knows I've been the one who thought it's my way or the highway. Goodness gracious, I'm not pointing my finger. I'm telling you, I get it. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. But if your measuring stick is man's measuring stick, then you're going to miss the measuring that's from God, which says you're successful, that says that you're all right in his book, that says that you're good enough, that says that you've never failed him, that says that you're, he value, values you and every part of you. So your mouth today is real simple. I am a new person. When I was still selfish and full of me, God died for me. When I was unaware of his love, God died for me. When Jesus died for me, he set me up for success and victory. When Christ confronted death for me, I became dead to the wrongs of my life and alive to his life. He trumped all my wrongs. Listen, Jesus trumped all your wrongs. He trumped all your wrongs. He trumped all your wrongs. He trumped all your wrongs before you knew they were wrong. He trumped all your wrongs while you were doing your wrong. He trumped, trumped all your wrongs before you did your wrong. All your wrongs are trumped. Your movement today, now check this out. Your movement today is I'm going to fulfill a previous goal I did not accomplish. Okay, so this is my question. Do you have a previous goal you have not accomplished that you need to accomplish? It could be bite size or it can be huge as long as you break it down into bite size bites. Otherwise, it will be overwhelming and you still won't um, accomplish it. I have one. I picked up finishing my book. I picked up finishing, um, I have several books actually that are left to complete. But this one in particular is the one that's drawing on my heart. And God's been sending me messages saying, come on Donna, get back to writing. Come on babe, come on back to writing. It's your calling. Come with me. There's an intimate place when I write with the Lord. There's an intimate place when I'm in that space with Him. Because that's His direction for my life. And when you're in the direction of the Lord, you're in the intimacy of the Lord. You may not even think you're intimate. You may not feel intimate. You may feel like you're dry as a bone. You may feel like the sun hasn't been out in years. But I'm telling you, when you're in the will of God, He is rooting you deeper than ever. He is shining down you and shining up through you brighter than ever. I have had more people talk to me when I've been in a season where I thought I was not going to make it that have said to me that I've encouraged them, that I've strengthened them, that I've been life for them. When I thought I was dying on the inside and all they could see was life. Why? Because God was moving. God is moving. God's at work. So you be encouraged. God's at work in your life, in this season of your life. So have you received the victory Christ accomplished? Do you see the success of Christ moving in you and through you? Maybe you have... Would you mind handing me my water? Would it be too much trouble? It's in here. Maybe you're in a situation where you felt like a failure. Maybe you felt like your life has been so cattywampus. Maybe you felt like you've been relationally with people that you've not been able to be your best or do your best or you've not... Ever, been able to feel your best or execute the way you think you should execute or serve the way you think you should be able to serve and you're like man what's wrong with me or maybe somebody's already pointing out bad things about you or pointing out your imperfection instead of celebrating thank you so much instead of celebrating your victories look there's a time when somebody else might miss the victory that you know you've accomplished and maybe they see your weaknesses instead of your strengths, but that's when you get to rise and see your strengths. Listen, today uh, I went to Kroger to pick up a present for Chelsea on my way to her house today. And when I was there, I saw this woman and my insides were stirred. And uh, she was there working in the floral department. 
And I began to ask her a question because I wanted something real specific. And she was saying I couldn't have it. And I was trying to say, well, I don't understand why I can't have it. Could you explain to me why I can't have this little thing? Can you just switch this around? Can I get it anyway? You know, I was really trying to work the system because I see, saw no reason why I couldn't have my little smiley face that I wanted. <laughs> and as I was talking with her, God was stirring in me. And eventually, I just said to her, I said, listen. And, and you know what? She got me my smiley face. She gave me my smiley face. <laughs> And at it, anyway, it worked out perfectly. It's exactly what I wanted to take. And the Lord allowed me to share with this woman uh, something that was very valuable to her, and this was it. You are valuable. Though you, though you think you are unseen, <clears throat> though you think you're not noticed, though you think what you do doesn't matter, God sees you, God notices you, and God knows what you're doing. So listen. Where you feel like you're not victorious. Where you feel like you're a complete failure. God says, lift your head. Lift your head. You're not a woman of shame, is what I told her. You are not to blame, is what I told her. Though they may think you're wrong, what I told her is you're not wrong. Not at all. That God is for you and not against you. He's got something for you. He's got something for you. So hang in there. And look at yourself in the mirror and validate yourself where man cannot validate you, where everybody is accusing you. You come up and you come out and you stand tall and you remember the one who created you. The one who made you says, you're okay. You're good enough. You are loved. You are valued. You are appreciated. There's nobody like you. Don't give in. Don't give up. Don't turn back. Don't turn around. But look up and be watchful for God is for you. And God lives inside you. And then I went on to tell her, do you know that God himself lives inside of you? Do you know that the creator of all humanity lives inside of you? Do you know that you have a father that believes in you and is for you and is speaking to you and wants to share with you and wants to show you how to travel over the river and through the woods? She was greatly encouraged. She was greatly strengthened. Now, what if I had been a butthead in that situation because I wanted what I wanted and gotten in a bad mood? I'm telling you, I would have ripped off my own destiny of encouraging somebody else. And I would have ripped her off by not being bread for her to eat that day because this woman needed a bite of bread. This woman needed a word from heaven. And you know, in the old covenant, it's called manna. But you know, all it meant was, what is it? Well, we know what it was, was the cross. And who it was, was the Christ. And so we don't have that question anymore. We know the answer is the Christ. The answer for her and the answer for you. I want to encourage you today. In your movement today, as you look at the situation, it's Friday, so you have a couple of days to accomplish your goal. Look at a goal a previous goal you've had that you have not accomplished. You might have several. Shoot, I got a whole attic worth. I got a bunch of stuff I haven't accomplished that are on my list. But one of the things that God is highlighting to me to finish a previous goal is a book that I have started, just not completed. What is it for you? God is going to help you accomplish your goal. Maybe your goal is you want to be kind in a situation where you've not been kind. Maybe your goal is being present where you've not been present. Maybe your goal is working where you've not worked. Maybe your goal is sleeping when you've not been able to sleep. Maybe your goal is cooking dinner every night instead of scooting out. Maybe your goal is making sure you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Whatever your goal is, in the practical realm, I want you to start writing it down and then start looking at what it will take for you to accomplish it. You might need some help accomplishing your goal. You might need someone to come alongside you. You might need someone to remind you of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You might need someone to edit. You might need someone to help you with spelling. You might need someone to encourage you to eat. What, whatever it is, Whatever your goal is, you can write down what it is you need in order to do that. And God will show you what it is so that you can move forward. 
in this season of life. Remember, this is 40 days to the brave new you, and it ends on January 1. So you have time to accomplish your goal, but go ahead and start today. Start today. Your optional reading uh, today is out of Romans 6, 4. And let me tell you something. You walk in newness of life. You don't have to look at that goal as something that you've lost and you'll never be to attain it. No, you walk in newness of life. You are successful. He lives inside of you. You are successful. And you are able to accomplish the goal that you are supposed to accomplish. One step at a time. Four, six, four is the reading. And I would like to read this out loud tonight. I normally do not. I normally have you read. But I want you to check out Romans 6, 4 tonight. Clearly in the middle of a conversation. Romans is long. It's a beautiful letter. And it introduces, it covers the old life. It introduces the new life. And it covers the new life. But check out Romans 6. 6. 6-6? Six, six? No, 6-4. Six, you ready? <sighs> oh, no. Let me go back a little bit. Romans 6. So what do we do then? Do we persist in sin so that God's kindness and grace will increase? What a terrible thought. We have died to sin once and for all, as a dead man passes away from this life. So how could we live under sin's rule a moment longer? Or have you forgotten that all of us who were immersed into union with Jesus, the Anointed One, were immersed into union with His death? Sharing in His death by our baptism means that we were co-buried and entombed with Him. So that when the Father's glory raised Christ from the dead, we were also raised with Him. You were raised with Him. We have been co-resurrected with Him so that we could be empowered to walk in the freshness of new life. You have been co-resurrected with Him and empowered to walk in the freshness of life. For since we are permanently grafted into him to experience a death like his, then we are permanently grafted into him to experience a resurrection like his and the new life that it imparts. Now check this out. Could it be any clearer that our former identity is now and forever deprived of its power? What was that former identity? The former identity was that which agreed with the law. The former identity was being identified in Adam. The sin nature. That was what they're talking about. What did he say? Could it be any clearer that our former identity, basically in Adam, is now and forever deprived of its power? For we were co-crucified with him to dismantle the stronghold of sin within us so that we would not continue to live one moment longer submitted to sin's power to the old nature's power, not to doing something bad, not to breaking the Ten Commandments, no, to dismantling the stronghold of the old nature within us. You are disbarred from the old nature. And you are in Christ this day. This is a challenge to see one another and to see ourselves no less than how Christ sees us. To see ourselves as already successful. When you see yourself winning, maybe you'll actually become successful in specific areas of past failure. Like these things that you want to accomplish that you haven't been able to accomplish if you accomplish it with Christ, you can look at that situation and go, whoa, no, I've accomplished it. And you can say, hey, I won. Listen, are you a winner no matter what? Of course. Come on, guys. Of course. We're in Christ. We are loved. There's nobody like us. We're good to go. But on this planet, there are things that we want to do. And so why not do them with the Lord who shows us how to pass through? Believing in yourself is what you've got to do, and you've got to rock on in the place of believing yourself. 
doing the best you can while you're on the way to where you're going. Now I'm going to check out some comments and see where we're at today, okay? Wayne came on. I don't know if Wayne is still there, but Wayne, bless you. Bless you. I hear you. I hear you too, Wayne. I see you. Hello, Jennifer. I'm glad to see you. Perfectionism is from fear. Success is living in love. His standard. Amen. Amen. Martha, it's so good to see you. Bless you. Welcome. Jennifer says, Yes, I've literally been in the midst of a panic attack and people said they felt so much peace around me. It is about the truth of who we are and who is in us. Amen, Jennifer. Amen. Never undermine your success by thinking you only took a few steps. They are steps in the right direction. You are closer to the goal. Amen, Jennifer. Yes. Amen. And then Chris. What does Chris have to say? My mouth gets me in trouble all the time. It's hard. Words slip sometimes that express just how angry I am in the moment, but I always feel so badly after having said it. Well, my love, it does sound like your heart hasn't caught up to the forgiveness that took place at the cross. It sounds like you hold yourself in contempt and that you're angry with you. Even though you're angry, you may spew out to others. It sounds like you have anger inside toward you. So I encourage you today, matter of fact, put your hand right here on your heart, Chris, if you're still there. Put one hand here and just say with me, I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. And if someone comes to your mind, I want you to say, I forgive and call out that person. I forgive X. I forgive Y. I forgive Z. Forgive and let it be gone. Forgive and let it be gone. At the cross, forgiveness took place. The one who hurt you, the one who harmed you, the one who hinders you, the one who doesn't validate you, the one who uh, puts you into a place where you get angry, that person has already been forgiven as well. And you were forgiven. It is equal at the foot of the cross. And it was it's equal because you've all been co-crucified, co-buried, and co-resurrected, and now co-glorified. So the person who has harmed you is also the person that has already been forgiven. It makes it a little clearer when you really come down to the, the niche of understanding that the very issue you have is probably the issue they have as well. And that Jesus forgave us all of all the stuff. I bless you today in day 20. I think I'll probably come on sometime this weekend. I have a little note, a little, <clears throat> little thought going on about loving ourselves and some ideas. So I'll bring that probably sometime Saturday. So look for it. Please be sure and share this video on your feed. That gets word out. And if you have friends that you think would find value in this group, you're welcome to invite them. I bless you. Until soon, this is Donna Reiners. And I'll see you next week on Monday for day 21, where we will start the week of being victorious over our past. Love you.